Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. Today we finish this arc bust from Spellcrow. We are painting the fur and the metal armor. Also, I'm going to reveal my new highlight sauce. That's good. This is different than my thinning sauce for airbrushing and no, 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 it's not the flow improver. So, so yes, it's not the flow improver and I'll tell you why. Mats and tools are all sponsored by the following brands. Also, Spellcrow is the sponsor of our Orc Bus today. Do check them out. My first bus was also from Spellcrow. And this is actually just my second bus, the Orc Bus. And it took me a while to like gain the confidence to paint this Orc Bus. So let's talk about flow improver while we dry brush the fur. So our highlight sauce is not the flow improver, but the flow improver is great. It's like more important than water or even thinner and I have a video, I'll put the link below. So the flow improver is a thin down retarder medium. They mix um, alcohol and water. The alcohol is there so that it eases or like it helps evaporate the additive so that the paint will dry on the surface and then the water to add surface tension surface tension against like the surface of the airbrush and stuff like that and then retarder medium so again the flow improver is great for airbrushing but i feel the drying time the slow drying time is negligible when it comes to brush painting Oh wait, I'm not happy with the painting of the fur at this moment, at this part of the video, so I consider it a fail. You'll see later why. The fur is looking okay as of the moment, but I need to filter it and make it lighter because we'll do something with it later. So back to the flow improver, I feel personally that the drying time of the the slow drying time of the flow improver is not slow enough for brush painting. The drying time is slow enough so that the paint from the airbrush to the surface of the model remains wet and like fresh, but it's not long enough or slow enough for brush painting for you to blend all those colors or much much more for wet blending. Oh, now the fur is ready for our freehand painting. <laughs> so now we do leopard trunks. Just a quick one. The leopard trunks is actually a joke and was inspired from Argento Design, my friend from Instagram. He kind of like told me that this hobby is supposedly fun and we should be like making fun of ourselves once in a while and not take this like not take ourselves too seriously so now after painting the free hand we're going to do glazes or washes with transparent paint so that it will be orangey and yellowish and it will look like leopard skin so we use the highlight sauce for the painting of the freehand and the highlight sauce is basically there so that it's easier to do freehand work and edge highlighting or highlight in general. So the highlight sauce is there so that it retards the drying time because I'll show you the ratio of like the proportion of the mixture later and it gives you like a very nice flow to your paint so that it's easier to paint details. Oh, by the way, for new subscribers or for people who are watching this video or my video for the first time, I like adding mediums to transparent paints or, and inks because it softens those paints. Soften the paint simply means that you won't produce nasty, very harsh, watermarks so i'm trying to create more volume here for the fur i'm putting more filtering or lazy wash around the bottom areas of the fur 
However, due to too much filtering, the leopard patterns, we have to make it darker. So we're going to use some sepia ink. The sepia ink, we're not thinning with mediums or not even with water. I like painting inks for small areas like almost pure or unthinned. Be careful on painting inks, unthinned inks over larger surfaces because it will produce very nasty watermarks. So we're almost done with the leopard skin. It looks okay and it's super fun. Now our sexy art is almost done. Now we do the armor NMM. The problem with this one is that I was thinking of making it look like steel NMM. However, it's an art. It should be iron NMM. So I should have stippled textures and rust colors and stuff like that. So I was caught in between and the finished product is caught in between. So I paint NMM with like based on how Serio Calvo approaches NMM. However, my work is so far from his NMM. There's a slight difference though, other than Serio Calvo's work is better, way better. But I think if Serio was to paint this armor part, he is going to paint a base color of like a gray paint. And then he will paint in the shadows and the highlights. As for me, I do glaze layering or glaring. Basically, I add a bit of medium, thinner medium or glaze medium and build up the highlight colors from black. I kind of find this approach easier. But I will admit, I will try the Serio Calvo approach because I think that is more versatile. The main problem with my approach is that if you want to add more highlights, it's kind of longer because you kind of build up the highlights with previous darker colors. So obviously, last minute highlights or shadows is not too, like, not applicable with my approach, at least with this model. So next time when we do NMM, we're going to try the Serio Calvo method. However, my approach, at least for this model, is easier once you've sketched, like, the initial areas where the highlight should be because it's a matter of just painting lighter colors on top of each other and painting less and less areas. But then again, it's important to note that we're doing glaze layering or glaring. You should watch my other videos for this technique. Glaring is basically mixing two parts paint and one part thinner medium or glaze medium and you mix that paint and you paint it on top of the previous color. You also can mix the previous color with the new color so that you have more subtle transitions. So glaze layering is different from glazing because glazing you mix around three parts glaze medium and one part paint and you have a very like over thin paint for glazes. I also do glazes on top of the glaring to further soften the transitions but those are for finishing touches and I rarely show it on video. As you can see, our dark iron or burnt iron metal armor is shaping up nicely and we're going to do, actually we're going to do weathering later but I won't show it on video. Now we're going to use our highlight sauce again. This is going to be awesome. I highly recommend you try this at home. So using the highlight sauce, you just place it on the side. You wash the brush with water, wipe down the water, and then get a bit of highlight sauce and then get paint and then unload the paint of course and then you paint it on the model so basically you get a bit of highlight sauce every time you get paint and the highlight sauce will keep your brush wet even if you're using a very small detailed brush 
Your detailed brush will be soft and flexible for longer periods of time and no like dry pigments or dry paints on the tip. And you could draw really nicely because the flow of the paint is very nice. It's like painting with oils. Also, since our highlight sauce is kind of creamy, it has the same consistency as air paints and not like runny water. So when you paint details and highlights, very fine scratches and such, the paint won't run on you or run all over the model. So now, edge highlighting. Highlighting, very fine scratches and nice stippling actually will be so much easier with our highlight sauce. So it's available at my website for $100 per bottle. <laughs> Remember I said, or I just said it at Patreon. Anyways, I tested some oil paints a while back and also last weekend because I'm going to do some videos or a couple of videos for red grass games I'm going to do some oil painting using their glass palette so since then I was actually really desperate to come up with a way to paint like all paints but using acrylics oh lastly if you don't plan to buy my hundred dollar bottle highlight sauce do not mix the retarder medium with flow improver or thinner that's unnecessary because those contain alcohol and alcohol speeds up drying time. It's actually contradicting but those were formulated for airbrush use. So just mix one part retarder medium and around roughly five parts water and make your own highlight sauce. Now we're just finishing this Spellcrow Arc Boss with some glazes using inks. Also, we're doing or adding some highlights with ivory and gloss white. Oh, lastly, our highlight sauce won't make your highlights look like they were micro dry brushed. So since the highlight sauce will keep the paints wet and nice and smooth, your highlights will be nice, smooth, and very crisp. And won't look like dry brushing. Lastly, I highly recommend the Gloss White. It's perfect for our very like extreme highlights and it works really fine with our highlight sauce. Now our Salba mode. So I'm not fully happy with the finished output so far. So we did some weathering and also some like effects like blood. That's it Pansit. I hope you like the painting. This is like my second bust and I'm looking forward to painting my third bust. But however, <laughs> Spellcrow only has two busts. So that means I'm busted. So kidding aside, if you have any recommendations for my third bust, do like put it in the comment section below and I'm excited to paint my third bust. So that's it, we're done with my second bust and I hope to be painting another one soon. Also, if you like the format of the video, do give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So that's it. Try the highlight sauce and highlight and do edge highlighting like never before. That's it. We're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos!